Good afternoon and welcome to our next session with Nevgold. We'd like to thank Pear Tree for sponsoring this session. I'm Joe Fars, I'm a Vice President of Investment Banking here at Red Cloud. Pleased to have Ned Gold with us, a uh, relatively new gold story on the scene. It's driven by Brandon Bonifacio, he's President and CEO of Nevgold. He's also a mining engineer with an MBA, uh, was part of the Corp Dev team of Gold Corp. Uh, you know, Nevgold uh, recently listed onto the scene in July. It's outperformed, outperformed many of its peers, um, particularly those who, who've listed over the last 18 months. And uh, Brandon will walk us through his key focus on Limousine Butte uh, in Nevada. Brandon, with that, please take it away. Thanks, Joe. So why Nevgold? I think when you look at any junior mining story, you're looking for some key ingredients. I think first and foremost, the assets themselves. So we've been able to acquire two highly prospective exploration and advanced resource projects in Nevada from McEwen Mining, the Limousine Butte and Cedar Wash projects for less than $7 per ounce in the ground. So very modest deal terms for Nevgold. And both projects combined have had US 50 million spent on them. So we have a great robust geological database to work from. And that's allowed us to expedite our initial drilling program, which has now commenced at Limousine Butte. In terms of the resource expansion and exploration upside, we're seeing a lot of opportunities at our three district scale projects in Nevada and British Columbia. We'll walk through some of that today with specific focus on Limousine Butte. As I mentioned, we have just started our 10,000 meter drill program. The team itself, over 175 years of combined experience, a lot of that has been in Nevada. So the ex-Nevada Copper team, which progressed the Pumpkin Hollow project from exploration, resource stage, engineering studies through permitting, and the project is now in production. From a capital structure standpoint, we're extremely tightly held with less than 50 million shares outstanding. As Joe mentioned, we're a new story. We just went public this past June on the back of our 6.3 Canadian million raise. So we are well-funded and financed into 2022 to, to fully fund our very expansive and robust drilling programs from an exploration standpoint at our portfolio projects. And what does that lead to from an investment thesis? We have a clear path to a million ounces of near-term oxide resources in Nevada. We believe that ounce total can significantly increase with some of the exploration drilling we have planned. So we are targeting multi-million ounce projects and resources in Nevada and British Columbia. And we believe over the next six to nine months that will drive a significant re-rate in the market. From the portfolio itself, the Limousine Butte is the most advanced project on the southern part of the Carlin trend. This does have a historical resource and has a wealth of exploration historical drilling over 120,000 meters and 900 holes, which is a part of that robust geological database that we're currently leveraging as part of our 10,000 meter current drill program. Cedar Wash is in the southeastern part of the state. It's a bit earlier stage, but a highly prospective gold silver project it was a grassroots discovery made by the McEwen Group and offers and rounds out our portfolio in Nevada from an exploration upside standpoint. And Ptarmigan in British Columbia, this came by way of the vehicle utilized for the reverse takeover transaction. It's a very interesting exploration, high grade polymetallic silver gold copper asset in British Columbia. It offers us a district scale exploration asset in BC and a very interesting lever from a valuation standpoint for Nevgold today and as we push into 2022. As we zoom in on Limousine Butte, it's located, as you can see in the figure on the right, on the southern part of the Carlin trend. I think worth noting, it's a 67 square kilometer land package, all on federal BLM ground, which allows a much more, much more expedited timeline from a permitting standpoint. Its access and infrastructure is fantastic. It has paved state highways running right next to the project, and there's a power line. We also have water rights organized. And it is a historical resource. So you can see the table in the bottom right, just under 300,000 ounces of 0.8 gram per ton oxide resources near surface. But worth noting is there are some higher grade intercepts within the land package, close to 25 meters of seven gram per ton material, 26 meters of close to four gram per ton material. So again, we have a lot of exploration upside, both from a resource standpoint and some of the higher grade feeder structures that we will be targeting in this upcoming season. As we move to that, resource base and exploration upside topic. You can see where the historical drilling is being situated along that 20 kilometer fault corridor that's trending northeast to southwest. Most of that drilling is only down to approximately 150 meters. From a Nevgold standpoint, we are testing the known areas of mineralization, but we're also stepping out laterally 
and at depth from an expiration standpoint. We believe that's the real driver to that multi-million ounce target. And how we're arriving at that million ounce marker by Q1 of 2022, we have the Resurrection Ridge target, which hosts the historical resource, but there's also a near-term resource expansion opportunity at Cadillac Valley. So both those combined look like they're targeting that million ounces and beyond. And we look to, be, to update the market on that interim resource update by Q1 of 2022. An update of where we are today, you can see the historical mine Golden Butte pit to the right and where our drill rig is currently situated. We've now commenced drilling as of last Thursday. We're in the midst of our 10,000 meter active drill program, which will span over Q4 of this year into Q1 of next year. The focus of that drill program is on resource delineation and expansion along with exploration. And we will be extremely active from a news flow standpoint over the next six months as we drive to that Q1 2022 interim resource update. Shifting to the southern part of the state, Cedar Wash is a 40 square kilometer land package, again, all on BLM ground. Its infrastructure is again great as Nevada goes with highways running right next to the project. This was a grassroots discovery made by the McEwen group. We went in and we staked the southwestern part, which is surrounded in that yellow uh, line. In that area, there was soil samples up to 2.1 gram per ton gold and over a gram per ton gold in historical assays. So again, we picked up all prospective gold silver uh, prospects in the district by way of organic claim staking. We now control close to 40 square kilometers. And this project does have approximately 7,000 meters of historical RC and air rotary drilling. Some of the intercepts are close to 11 meters of two gram per ton. That hole was from surface close to 16 meters of 1.4 gram per ton. Again, that hole was from surface. So it is a very interesting exploration asset within our portfolio. And there's a lot of analogies to an asset which is 20 kilometers on the Utah side of the border called Gold Strike, which is owned by Liberty Gold, which hosts a million ounces. So a lot of the same host rocks are seen at Cedar Wash. And we find this a very interesting exploration asset after our technical review. And then moving up to British Columbia, the Ptarmigan Project, it's a 93 square kilometer land package. And when we look at some of the historical work that's keep being completed on the asset, it's by no means as early stage as most people think. It's had over 14,000 meters of diamond drilling with assays trending north of 2,000 gram per ton silver, 37 gram per ton gold, and a percent copper. So it's very high grade. It hosts both epithermal vein style mineralization along with sulfide mineralization. And what we're doing underneath the NEVGO ownership today is we've digitized the database, we've worked through the data compilation, and we're pulling together a drill targeting exercise to advance the asset in 2022 with an active field program at Ptarmigan. And that segues into what the next steps are for NEVGO as a company. We're currently in the midst of that 10,000 meter active drilling program at Limousine Butte, which will push towards a Q1 interim resource update in 2022. From a cedar wash standpoint, we're working through the surface geology work at the project now, and we'll push that into a Q1 2022 active phase one drill program. And from a ptarmigan standpoint, we're currently working through that data compilation and drill targeting exercise, and we anticipate advancing that asset, that asset in 2022 once we wrap our head around the technical merits and what that entails from a work program standpoint. All in all, this entire program here equates to approximately a budget of Canadian 3.5 million. With our 4.5 million Canadian in the bank today, we are extremely well-funded to complete all this work and beyond in 2022. And we believe this will drive significant news flow, helping us drive that valuation we rate in the marketplace. Looking at the team itself, without going name by name, at the board and executive level, we have a lot of expertise and experience in Nevada and in and around the Canadian capital markets. We believe with individuals like Julio Bonifacio, Victor Bradley, Greg French, Tim Dyer on the board, along with Derek Unger, Bob McKnight in our executive group, we have a lot of experience in terms of the roadmap of how to advance a project from expiration resource stage all the way through studies and permitting and into potentially construction. So we have the roadmap to advance and de-risk our asset base today. We're very happy with the group we've been able to pull together at such an early stage company. Capital structure wise, as I mentioned, less than 50 million shares out. I think important to point to the valuation that equates to. So trading in and around the 40 cent price range today, which is what we financed at, it's just under 
20 million Canadian. Again, with our 4.5 million in the bank, we are well funded into 2022. And I think when you look at the shareholder registry, we have had some success, as Joe mentioned, in the marketplace. I think due to the fact that we are extremely tightly held from a capital structure standpoint, our free trading float is only around 38%. Uh, so naturally, it creates a great platform for us to work from as we drive into our extremely heavy news flow period with our 10,000 meter drilling program and assays imminent coming out of Limousine Butte over the next month or so. And always good to look at peers operating in and around with similar style assets. So as you can see with us being on the left side of the figure, trading at less than $20 million, if we can drive to that Q1 2022 interim resource update, you can see what that equates to from a valuation standpoint at trading at approximately $56 per ounce in the ground in Nevada today. And then as we further de-risk and advance the projects into the preliminary economic assessment and pre-feasibility stage, that creates that next valuation lift in the market. A great story coming out of Nevada over the last 12 months was Corvus Gold and the sale process there, which equated to a $520 million acquisition price at $120 per ounce in the ground. So naturally, as you advance and build the critical mass from a resource standpoint, we believe we will be and have a lot of eyeballs on the story uh, once these assets are well-defined from a resource standpoint and the economics are showing to be positive from an engineering study standpoint. So Joe, that was it for the quick rundown of the slide deck, which was quick. So I'll open it up to any questions, I guess, moderated by yourself to start. Yeah, that's perfect, Brian. Appreciate the uh, the presentation. Um, you know, you guys are new on the scene. Um, you know, we've seen um, how some other RTOs and, and IPOs have really underperformed uh, over the last eighteen months. But you know, you guys are doing it, it quite differently, and you got a number of catalysts in the hopper. Maybe just walk us through, you know, what the balance of the year looks like in in regards to drilling and what you see in twenty twenty two. For sure. So we've started our 10,000 meter program. That's obviously a key catalyst. As we know in this business, the real value is driven by way of the drill bit. So as we start our and advance our 10,000 meter program, we look for that to trend into sort of Q1 of 2022. So the 10,000 meters will be accomplished by approximately February or March of 2022. And then we will fold that into a Q1 2022 interim resource update. So naturally 10,000 meters of assays coming out of Nevada will drive significant news flow over the next three to six months. And we think that interim resource update in Q1 of 2022 will be a great milestone for people and investors to latch onto in terms of what the valuation of the company should be when you look at some of our peers trading at approximately $56 per ounce in the ground. So again, it is, it is and will be an extremely busy period over the next bit coming out of Limo Butte. And then looking at the other assets from a Cedar Wash and Ptarmigan standpoint, we wanna stage into the programs at those projects. We want to be systematic in our approach. Uh, but with that being said, both those assets offer district scale expiration upside, and they will be advanced accordingly within the NEPCO portfolio. So it should be a very active next six to nine months. And then we will stage into those other assets accordingly uh, and manage our budget as well. Yeah, maybe maybe just touching on those other assets too, Brandon. I mean, that Tarminigan asset uh, looks very attractive. There's some very splashy grades coming out of there. Um, you know, maybe uh, just to our investment community who, you know, is looking for flow through amenable opportunities, maybe you can shed some light uh, on exactly what the plan looks like and, you know, how this could be uh, an opportunity to unlock more value for Nevgold. For sure. And it's a question we have received a lot, as you can tell with the company name being Nevgold, the focus out of the gates has been on our Nevada asset base. With that being said, Tarmigan offers a very interesting valuation lever for the company. We inherited a very robust geological database. It did take us some, to, some time to compile that database. Our technical group is currently working on building a program for 2022. So to the question on flow through, doll, flow through potential and also opportunities for that asset, we think it creates a lot of potential routes we can take as a company, whether that's pure sale, a potential spin out opportunity being dividended or kept by Nevgold shareholders or advancing the asset underneath the Nevgold ownership. So again, a very interesting valuation lever. It gets no value in the marketplace today. But as you mentioned, with some of those splashy grades and all the historical dollars spent, which equates to approximately 10 million Canadian, gives us a great leg up in terms of what we want to accomplish at that project going into 2022. 
That's perfect, Brandon. We'll definitely keep our eyes peeled on that. And uh, I just want to thank you for your time today. Uh, guys, we're all out of time here. Uh, no opportunity for further questions.